Hello and welcome to episode three of Let's Learn Roo. Um, in the grand scheme of things, you guys don't really seem to be liking these videos. I don't get many views on them, but for those of you that do watch them, you are insanely helpful in all the comments you give me, and I really, really appreciate it. And for that reason, we're going to keep going with this series until it is done. So, in the last episode, we learned, well, we tried to learn how to solve this 1x2x3 block, also known as the first block. And the feedback that you guys gave me was so helpful, and um, it's really helped me to kind of look past F2L and get better at using the whole cube. Obviously, I've still got quite a long way to go, but really, guys, thank you so much. Keep it up. I really appreciate it. Um, which means that in today's video, we're going to be doing the next 1x2x3 block. And this is where it gets a little bit iffy for me. I'm not entirely sure um, how I should best go about this, but, you know, with your guys' help, I'm sure I will be absolutely fine. So let's get started. So just from what you guys have said, First of all, you told me to basically not do the center switching algorithm because that is slow and not particularly helpful. Um, you said that using the um, the E slice was terrible, so just do a U prime if I am, and then an M prime. Um, but uh, I'm gonna try my best to not do that and to always pair up the center with the uh, middle edge right away. And I'm gonna be assuming that I've done that for the rest of uh, this series. And then also you've told me that Ru is rotationless, meaning now that I've built this block, the cube stays like this forever. There's no doing this, doing whatever, doing turns. Um, it stays like this. I keep my hand glued here. We're not moving anything here. So obviously we need to build the rest of the puzzle. And I can't really do that without rotation, so I'm gonna have to just kind of look around, but. I see that we have this white here, which must be, uh, just because of how the cube is, the white and green. And there it is, we're right. So my first instinct, of course, is to go pop. And then we've got um, the center and middle edge matched up, uh, which is great. And now, do I just go ahead and, and put it down on the bottom? Because doing so kind of traps this corner and this corner. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if I should just go ahead and do that right away or if it makes more sense to do something else. Um, I also see this edge here and I know that it would be quite fast to do this. And that matches these two up. And now what? I guess I need to put this white in here so maybe it'd be Good to do like a mini sexy move. Don't know if you guys saw that. So I just move the pair out of the way, put the, the white on the bottom as we want down here, and then to put this back in, we use the whole M and just pop it in the bottom right here. And then for this piece, these two, we want to pair them up as well, obviously. I think the fastest way to do that would be a U2, M, and then I think we just have to put them in with an R, U prime, R prime, and that's that. And then obviously the centers don't have to be solved at this point, but there we go. The root cube is solved. Um, how was that? <laughs> um, it takes a lot of thinking for me, uh, just because I want to be as efficient as possible, but I also don't quite have the brain power for that yet, um, but hey, I thought that went okay. There's just a lot of a lot of things I'm unsure of. Like I will try and start doing a move, and I'll think, oh, that's too many moves, and then I have to stop and rethink it. Um, so definitely, definitely help me, <laughs> help me out, please. Um, and I guess next up, we'll just re-scramble and uh, start again. Okay, so next up, we stick with the one by two by three block we've already solved on the left, and we try and solve the right. 
so I can see another easy way to match up the middle edge with its center. That would be a U prime. If we go back, I suppose we have. Oh, what do we have? We have these matched up, but they're incorrect. So that's just going to be difficult, no matter what. Um, it's just going to use a lot of moves. <sighs> Let me think. Would it make sense to match up this edge, bring this piece out, then maybe do like a U prime? Oh no, that's not going to work. Okay, an M prime. U2, M2, that matches those up, and then we have exactly the same case, maybe I should have put the white on the bottom to pop them in, and now this, now the fastest way for me that I can think of to do this is to do the F2L move, matched up, four moves, um, but is there a faster way to do this, I, I don't know. Would it maybe be faster to do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't. <laughs> this is where I'm struggling because I still I'm thinking to myself, oh, I have this block on the left hand side, can't move that, and it makes me just think, oh, two F to L pairs already in. I know that I can mess with the M slice, but I still want to do algorithms or like intuitive moves for F to L. Um, for cases that I'm not familiar with yet. So if there's white on top, I think, oh, I must do the white on top move. Um, so it's tricky. It definitely is tricky. Anyway, so we have a nice easy block right here that is solved with either an M prime or a R. So like that or like that. Obviously the R is much easier, so maybe we should go with that. And we line it up with the green. And then we have this guy here, which can be solved in three moves. One, well, in one move, but three moves if you don't want to disturb this. And then we have white on top again. So I'm going to go ahead and put the white on the bottom here. So what do I do here? Does it still make sense to do the F2L thing? Because this guy at the bottom here, if we do this, we bring him up. But we can't mess up this. So we can't do this algorithm to pair them up because we have this locked right here. So, so what do I do when white's on top? I can obviously stop it from being on top by bringing it round and using this empty slot here. And then when I when I do the lowercase r prime and bring it back, it will pair them up. I guess that makes sense. But then would it not just be faster to do the F2L move? I don't know. Oh confusing. Very confusing, but I I don't know. I don't know, guys. Um, I know this is the hardest part because it's very intuitive, not that many algorithms, and I'm very much still a beginner. Um, I feel like I'm nailing this first block, and this second block just needs some work. And after that, it's it's fairly straightforward in terms of doing uh, the four corners, and then getting your good edges, and then permuting them. Um, so we'll get to that fairly soon. I just need a little bit more advice on the very first intuitive parts, but uh, your advice was so helpful in the last video. I, I really appreciated that. And if you guys could help me out again, that would be fantastic. I'm trying to figure out a way of crediting you guys because it's, it's really, you guys don't have to help and I really like that you do. So if there's any way I can credit you, I will try and figure that out. But in the meantime, just be happy knowing you're helping out someone who kind of sucks at root. And that's about it. That's it from me though guys. Have a really amazing day. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.